Okay, so since this thing is set up, they can see us before we can see them. Because oh. <laughs> I haven't set anything up yet. And just like that, we were on. I, I think. I think. I think we're on. We're on. <laughs> Hello. Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, cool. There's, Well, Karen, thank you for... Um, Thank you for being here and ending, yes. ending your stream early. Sorry about that. Uh, hi, Tish. Hi, hey, JC. Tish. Hi, Paula. Patricia. Sarah. Valerie. Charity. Karen. Tara. Hi, you guys. Wow, you guys. Good evening. <laughs> JC's like, Australia doesn't exist. We're all just actors paid by NASA. <laughs> <laughs> Atomic Elf 1. Hi. Hi. We can see you. Awesome. awesome. Hi, Leslie. We could see you. Artist Haven's like, ta-da! Ta-da! Yeah, so we don't have the intro bells and whistles set up yet. Not yet, but we shall have Hi, the intro. Hi, Fat Cat. Hey, Fat Cat. Hey, did Everett. You, did you get the snow? We did get the snow. We did. We got the snow, and I think we're supposed to get more snow. Yes, I'm pretty sure we're supposed to get some snow on Friday. Hi, Angie. Hi, Vivica. I feel like this chat box should be somewhere else. I'm moving the chat Move box. Move it then. There we go. That's fine. That's better. Hi, Joseph. Hey, I haven't got to live in so long. Hey, Rafi. Hey, how are you, Joseph? Hi, Ginny. Hi again. Hi, Ginny. Just got back from a walk downtown. Cool, That's awesome. Sarah. Yeah, I think, Sarah, you're going to get some snow, too. Yeah, everybody's going to do well. Not everybody, but. People, the snow is coming. <laughs> Everyone gets snow. Everyone gets, you get snow and you get snow. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Nancy. I'm driving an autocorrect and not like the way I said your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I wondered after the fact if that was a high clee. Hi, Joseph. No worries at all. I totally understand the autocorrect. I mean, the autocorrect, it's one of the reasons that I have such <laughs> a hard time with our subtitles. You know, for the longest time, oh, yeah. for the longest time, we weren't signed up on YouTube correctly, so it wasn't doing the subtitles. And now that we could do subtitles, it doesn't understand like, what to do with my I name. I don't even go in there. I don't change it because I'm like, whatever. It's <laughs> going to be what it is. <laughs> Leslie said autumnal midday rain here. Oh, that sounds oh, lovely. That sounds beautiful. Tara said, nope, it's going to rain here in Maryland. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Rain there. So yeah. It's going to be rain or snow. Mm -hmm. Hi, Nostalgic. <laughs> that's a swear word better, better watch, watch those, those cusses, cusses. <laughs> I, I think we're into the video oh no it's only a minute in don't say snow <laughs> <laughs> so i wanted to get to a real quick question first because it came it's from beth of old roswell and she can't make it um but she left me this question on twitter and i thought it'd be fun to answer <laughs> When and what kind of pet are you guys going to get since you now got a permanent home? Love you. Peace out. Uh, that's a great question. That is a great question. A lot of people are very interested in finding out what kind of pet we're going to get. Um, and to be honest with you, if we do get a pet, it'll probably be a plant. Indeed. It will be a plant. Yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, Rafi and I love and adore dogs and cats, but we're very busy humans who also travel and we actually don't feel like we would be very excellent parents because of those things to yeah. a pet. We love the doggos. We love the cats. Uh, cats and dogs have their own personalities and each individual one has their own personalities and I've owned dogs in my life and I love them. Um... I've, I've only had cats when I was younger and they were mean. So I don't, I think that that's why I don't own cats. I, um, I had a cat for like, uh, three days when I was little, I found it in my yard and I caught it somehow. How did I catch it? Uh, and I brought it in the house and it was my cat and it basically hid from me. It was a mangy cat. It was a mangy cat. And my parents, um, uh, made up a lie to convince me to get rid of it. That my dad was allergic <laughs> when he wasn't. Um, the truth is that it was pretty mangy, and I think they didn't want to pay the vet bills right. to take in a cat that I found. I also caught a turtle once in my friend's yard and took it home with me and had him for about six months. Yeah. I think. And he, he didn't die. My mom took him back to the forest so he could be free. 
I'm sorry if I look distracted. YouTube is telling me that now would be a good time to insert an ad. I don't. Weird. I, we're not gonna I, do that. We're not gonna do that. Um, I'm closing that. Uh, leafy pets are good pets. In Florida, we had um, at our biggest uh, pet having capacity, we had 30 plants. Yeah. And unfortunately, they got taken out by various conditions. Yeah. When the hurricane happened, um, the gnats infested the pl- so our house was infested by little gnats so like i think back then we were only doing the private live streams and like literally it was like yeah yeah some of you guys it wasn't, will it wasn't pretty leslie's like thank you for being real about the responsibility that comes with owning a pet mad pug mother here yeah 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 that's that's the thing too is like we you know i've been in situations like that where i wanted to travel and then there's all kinds of, you know, you want to take care of your pet. And for us, we're very spontaneous. And that would, yeah, that would cause, that would cause some resentment. And I definitely don't want to own a pet. Not saying that we'll never own a pet, but like, I don't want to own a pet and then feel resentment towards. I love animals too much much to be a crappy mom to them. (laughs) Yeah. So I I know it's not the greatest answer, Beth, of old roswell but uh yeah that's that's no no pets for now other than green leafy ones we do have a yard rabbit that i have named kyle um and all the babies are named kyle they're all named kyle so clee goes out there and she's like oh hey cat hey cat <laughs> um, and kyle really likes our yard so we see her a lot and probably pretty soon we'll see her because we're nearing spring mm-hmm uh, what do we have here? Leafy pets are good. I just noticed the notification hard at work on art. No worries, Hi, Christina. Thank Christina. you for being here. Great. Hi, Rafi and Klee from Germany. We also got snow. Hi, Ooh, Germany. On hand Germany's said, on our list, by the way. Oh, yeah, definitely. My pet avocado just passed away on the plus side. It buries itself. <laughs> oh. Susan said, I got plants oh. and fish Easier to keep than a cat or dog. Mm-hmm. Christina said, oof, I want a bunny or a cat someday, but I probably would have problems with not being there because I'm working on art and the pet can't be in the studio because I'd be afraid it would chew bad stuff. Yeah. I mean, we had, when we were um, taking care of my dad, we were staying there and we had a dog and the dog would come into the studio and the dog was constantly covered in paint. Even though he was super good and he was pretty lazy, like mostly he liked to just sleep under one of our desks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he definitely still managed to get paint on him. Atomic Elf said, I once made the mistake of leaving beta fish tank in the kitchen windowsill when we went on vacation. I see where this is going. It was cold and I thought they needed some warmth. As soon as we left, a heat wave hit. Oh, no. Oh, my God. That reminds me. So we had we had a tank when I was young and there were angel fish in there. And we went out of town and the uh, heater broke. Oh, no. And it was the middle of winter in Chicago. And when we got back, it was frozen solid. And the angel fish was right in the center of the tank. It it looked like... Oh, neat, but not neat. Yeah, neat, but not neat at oh, all. Oh, man. Yeah, it was heartbreaking. Nostalgic said, I couldn't be without a cat. Mine has been with me from New York to CA and back. Aww. I totally get that. Cats are absolutely amazing, as are the doggos. Hi, Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Kelly's like, guess what? <laughs> My spouse has COVID. Ooh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry, Kelly. Hopefully it's not um, bad COVID. Hopefully it's mild. Linda said, my kids keep bugging me to get another dog, but I also like to travel. I love pets, but I don't feel I would be a good pet mom at this time. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. Like, you got to you gotta choose because I know, I know some people that get, I know some, I know a few people that, We'll have a dog and then, you know, get another dog. And then every time they want to go out of town, they just complain. And what, and I'm always like, why are you complaining about you? Figure it out. Like, yeah. yeah. Christina says, I have a pet rose, a pet aloe, and an ash gray plant I don't know the name of. Awesome. <laughs> Patricia says, I have a question. I have an art room and all the things, but now it's like I'm overwhelmed and I don't know where or what to start on. And I don't even know what to chunk. Any suggestions? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, because, you know, I've got the art room and I've got several projects going on. Um, basically, if I've got projects going on and I'm not sure what to start on, 
um, I make a list and I just, I kind of, I force myself to start on the first thing, right? I'll pick the thing that I'm most interested in doing, but as long as you get the process started, and that's the whole point of, you know, for chunking, obviously, is to get the process started. What You'll find that once you get started on something, and let's say it's time for it to dry or whatever, and you move on to the other thing, you'll you'll get that flow going. And that's really why you want to just get it started. So I would suggest just just start on anything. Just just get something started. Um, don't overthink it because mm-hmm. that's that's the thing that makes us um, pause for way too long is overthinking things. Yeah. So either go with the thing that you're most excited and pulled to or go with the thing that you're totally avoiding. And anytime you think of it, you're like, oh, wait. Away with you. Away with you. Um, e- either one of those things. Fat Cat asks, what if uh, Rabbit Kyle has baby? Well, Oh, yeah. Kyle had babies last year, and they were named Kyle. Yeah, they and, were all there. So it was like, hey, Kyles. And then when they have babies, <laughs> they'll be Kyle as well. <laughs> Hi, Holly Cat. Rachel said that's awesome. All of our bunnies in our yard are named Fred. Fred. <laughs> Tina, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Tina. Naomi. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Rafi and Klee. As a self-taught artist, I struggle with lack of critiques. Do you have any advice for fear of lack of growth due to living in my own echo chamber? How do you critique your own art? Uh, You know, honestly, the way that I critique my art is that when it feels done, it's done. You know, because in a lot of times I'll be working on something like, damn it, like whatever. And then I'll... Um, usually I won't finish on it until I really love it. Mm-hmm. Now, here's a caveat to that. Usually you really love a piece and then you create something else that you love even more and mm-hmm. you're going to want to compare them, compare the two and think like, well, this one's not as good as this one. And really at the end of the day, like it's remembering that if you liked it, if you loved it, somebody else out there is going to love it. Um, my barometer for me is like for jewelry, would I ask myself, would I be proud to wear this out or, um, with music, like, do I find myself wanting to hear the song or am I like, meh about the song? <laughs> yeah. Um, and like if you be, hear it five times and you're like, yeah, I'm good. I don't want to hear this yeah, anymore. If I, if I love the piece enough to wear it or I love the song enough to listen to it on repeat, then I'm, then that's my measure of like whether I'm happy with it. Hey, Shroy. Shroy says, my cat likes chilling in my studio. Excellent. Yeah. The other thing, too, is um, remember that, you know, like, if you could contact another artist and ask for a critique, that's great. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you also have to remember that, like, critiques are opinions, you know? Yeah. So what I would say is trust your own opinion when it comes to whether or not you feel that it's, you know, that it, that it's done or it's good or whatever good is relative so definitely just as long as you like it and you love it then i would say that you're good definitely christina wants to know how do you balance fun projects and stuff you have to do i'm thinking of having the fun stuff timed so i'm not afraid of spending so much time on it that i can't work on the have to stuff that's so, a hard balance to strike, and I feel like this year we're just, like, starting to get the handle on, like, the the balance between work life and then, like, fun and have-to projects and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Especially when you have a lot going on. We've designated um, days. We've designated weeks towards certain projects. We'll designate a day towards certain things, and um, we're trying to kind of strike the balance that way. Yeah, and the thing about it is, you know, the other side of it is you have to think about the have tos, right? So obviously in, when you're running a business, there's the have tos. Mm-hmm. The other side of that is making it fun, figuring out a way to make it all fun so that it doesn't feel like it. We, we have a tendency as humans in this world to whenever uh, it's a business or like art and like commissions to take on things and perceive things as this needs to be its work. You know, we walk around and we're showing everybody else like I'm working. Yeah. Don't you see? I'm busy. I'm working because it's almost like you're afraid to have fun with the projects that you're working on. I've made it a point over the last few years that everything is either going to be challenging, like a like a growth type challenge, or it's going to be fun. And either way, I'm going to try and find the fun in it. Uh, However, there are certain like I don't take on every commission. I only take commissions that I'm like really into. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's that's part of it. It's like balancing out 
what it is that you really want to do and then questioning like, do I need to do this if I don't enjoy this or could I give this to someone else to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's a good basis. Today is like a live stream day for us. So in between live streams, I did like, I chunked things that I had to do. Um, and tomorrow will be a studio day, which will be split between a thing that I want to make just cause and an order. Usually, um, usually that's how it is too. If I'm working on commissions, you know, cause I know there's always that point where like on a commission, I want to walk away from it. And I'll usually have other projects going on that I can walk to and work on those. But I try to split my time between two to three things um, when I'm in the studio. Jean wants to know, how can I get an honest critique of my work? Sometimes I feel like my family is just being nice. Yeah, but Jean, you might just feel that your family's being nice. Um, I would say just ask ask other people. Ask strangers. I mean, there's, there's, you know, in the book I talk about going out in the street and just taking your work out and just randomly stopping people and asking them what they think of your mm -hmm. art just as, as a social experiment. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not saying that that's what you need to do, but... There are options out there. There are um, options. As social media, obviously, you might get, you know, all kinds of different critiques on social media. There's groups that do art critiques. Yeah. Um, can I, I mean, you know, we have the Rogue Artist community site. We do our art critiques. We have a Discord page for it and yep. all that good stuff. Uh, I missed a funny comment about a cat. What is the it? The fat cat's like my... Uh, my cat likes to help me make jewelry. He sticks his whole face into my <laughs> feed box for <laughs> sniffs. I love mm -hmm. it. Uh, let's see. Christina said, I'm happy I caught this, the stream. We're happy that you're here. Us too. Artist Haven said, I'm getting an RV just so Rhea can come with. She loves riding in the vehicle. She's almost as weird as me. <laughs> That's great. That is great. Luz is here. Hi, Luz. Loves life. Sarah's like, show the art to us, Jean. <laughs> That's an option. Diane's like, woo, stumbled across, makes my evening. Awesome. Hi, Diane. Rachel's like, how do you tag someone? I think you just put the at in yeah, front of their name. Yeah, I think you put the at in front of their name. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Lucy's like, would love some advice about working out the parameters of a series. Okay, awesome. Okay. Lucy, do you have a jumping off point or are you like starting from scratch, no parameters at this point? Would love to hear more about yeah, that. Yeah, most definitely. Leaf is here. Hi, Leif. Sorry, chickens didn't want to go to bed. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. It happens. Hi, Devandy. Uh, Diane, switch to my art channel. No worries. Gotcha. All good. Nostalgic, how do you balance your multi-passion mediums? I have projects with vastly different disciplines required. There are bigger projects keeping me from progressing in other areas. So <laughs> that is something that we are currently working on a video for because we just this year with with the move and everything, we just figured out a system mm -hmm. and you can't see it, but I'll pull them out over here. There's like five clipboards over here. Um, there's a calendar. There is a checklist. Um, and there's all kinds of, we actually put together a system to be able to balance all the things that we're working on. Cause you know, we have the art, the jewelry, the music. Um, and then like big projects that we know are going to take us a year or more to complete. And so. being able to split them apart because like one of my, my dreams, my, one of my weird dreams is to, um, my weird dreams is to do a deck of playing cards. I want to create like a Rafi deck of cards mm -hmm. and you know, that's 52 works of art plus the the back cover and stuff so i know that that's going to take me some time so with projects like that it's kind of like planning it out and really allowing myself to the time to be able to work on it without um rushing because with everything that we all the different projects that we have going on it's very easy to fall into a trap where next thing you know you're just running out of time all mm -hmm. the time we're trying to have like a loose framework because a lot of this stuff is like as you said, very different disciplines, right? Music releases need to be one way. Book releases need to be another way. Big projects, another way. Big Daily sculptures, yeah. installations. And uh, then balance that with um, website orders and daily studio time and the media stuff. So we made a loose framework for the year um, with a generous amount of time allotted for the things that need it more than we think we need, because you always kind of do need more yeah, time than you think. Yeah. And we, and it's important that it's not strict. Yeah. You know what I mean? A that loose it's framework. Not, it's gotta be a loose frame. It has to be flexible because 
life happens. We've already deviated from the framework, if I'm being honest, but but it's working to at least have kind of a basis to go off of, of where you want to be with stuff on paper, in a document where you can look at it, not yep. rattling around in your brain jar causing chaos. Yeah. Deborah said pets are like children. I lost that. Did we lose it? Oh, the ticker tape jumped like a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, guys, if we missed your, if we miss your comment, just feel free to repost it or your, um, your question. Deborah said, my daughter gives the most honest critiques and accurate of anyone I know. Even my students like her critiques. That's nice. That's pretty good. I try to be very like, um, honest in my critiques also. And to point out, as someone said, I think Christina, the things I like and the things that maybe could be, we do that for each other. Yeah. Could be tweaked or something mine have currently are fun it just has deadlines so it needs to be done yeah and that's that's the thing like i set up deadlines be willing to move the deadline if like it becomes too stressful because the last thing you want to do is be working on creative projects and being stressed out you know if you think that you could still keep it challengingly fun then awesome but if not be willing to move a dead i am willing to move a deadline uh when we moved i had commissions that i was working on and i basically pushed them out to like three months Mm -hmm. so um people are willing to wait because they don't they don't want whack energy in their stuff yeah for real tina said i have some family who love everything i make and others who pick everything apart and very critical another family who say nothing art is subjective and not everyone will love it yeah Yeah, exactly i mean that's one thing to to remember it's not a big deal if somebody doesn't like your art so what Mm -hmm. you know and if somebody every time oh that's nice then so what you know that really when it comes down to it like you got to be willing to really like your art and you're always going to challenge yourself you're going to see something and you're going to be like you know what i could do that better i could do that better i could do that better naomi's like thank you where can i find the discord um so you can access our discord through the rogue community site yeah um which we is... just we just launched the rogue community site and it's roguefam.com or roguecommunity.com or rogueartistcommunity.com. It's, rogue all, it's all three. Yeah. All of them go, but the quickest one is Rogue Fam. We will also be doing a video about why we built the Rogue Community yeah. site. And we all left that. we left Discord and We, we didn't leave we, Discord. We left Patreon. We left Patreon <laughs> and we're doing our own thing. I'm sorry, they all get they all get mixed up in my head. Kathleen's like our local art group has critic critique days. You may have something similar around you. I yeah. Think, yeah. Usually there is some kind of something. Um there's a creative writing group here in this town that does like critiques for each other. Mm-hmm. Ginny's like, during the podcast earlier, I gave myself that amount of time to start and finish the March collab, and I did it. Subject, medium, and speed. Check, check, check. Even with a cat trying to help. Oh, Ginny, that's awesome. That's awesome, Ginny. Christina said, on the topic of uh, critiques, sometimes you get someone who makes up mistakes to point out just to say something, even when you do it right, like when you did it after reference accurately. Oh, like they just want to have something to say, so they... Yeah, that's actually, that's going to be, uh, that is also going to be a video because we had one of the rogues contact us because they posted something on Facebook and one of their friends or acquaintances decided that they were going to nitpick as if they were like a an artist and, you know, I was yes. like. No, I, there I, was no asking for critique in that I, particular I was like, point. F that person. Hi, Wendell. Hey, Abby. House is at a stable point, working through mental blocks and issues. Good. Good. Hi, Wendell. And also, hello to Wyatt, who I saw pop up earlier. Deborah said, there aren't enough local cafe and artists to have the evening discussions about art. I'm hoping that, so there's a couple of new cafes in the area. I'm hoping that some things get started. Yeah, things will open up. Because I think um, in Franklin, they have like a... They, they do an artist thing every month, and then the cafes here are doing stuff. So more and more cafes open up. Lucy's like, my only decision so far is that the series will be neurographic. Do I need to stick to consistent sizes, colors? Should I have an overarching theme? I think you can vary greatly yes. in your sizes. And you can also, I think, vary greatly in your color palettes. I think it depends, though. Um because when when I do a series, either A, I'll, I'll make it a point to stick to a certain size. Mm-hmm. 
um, or a similar color in the background, right? Even if it's an element of the background color. So obviously my one of my favorite colors apparently, because I seem to use it in everything I do, is like this mint bluish green color. And so when I did the Sunflower Girls series, it was keeping similar things. So it was the same, um, not the skin tones, the skin tones were different, but the eyes were the same exact coloration the hair was the exact coloration, and then I used um, gold leafing for certain elements, but then that blue was the same in the background. Now, the canvas sizes were all different. Mm -hmm. um, I've also done some where the character is the same, the subject matter is the same, and then the colors are all different in the background. Like your expression series? Yeah, like the expression series. Yeah, so I think if you have a one element that kind of ties everything together, um, even if it's the theme itself, yep. right, uh, then you can take liberties with the other um, parameters, if you will. But it comes down to what makes it feel cohesive to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Because it'll, it'll be cohesive as long as you say it's cohesive, but you want to have at least one element mm -hmm. that is the same across the board. Like, for, for some arters, it's... If, uh, arters? <laughs> For, for some, some artists, for some artists, it's a. Uh, I know one artist in particular that just does a blotch of paint, the same color paint across everything, and he does these pieces, and that's what ties them together. I'll usually go with a theme, uh, like for example, celestial or kinetic, um, and as long as that's the theme that ties it together, the kinetic series might have different stones, different metal types, but they'll all have a, a, a kinetic function, yeah. and so that makes them part of it. Diane said, uh, brain jar is now part of my vocabulary. I love it. <laughs> Naomi's like going out in the world with my art for the first time this summer. Ooh. What is your top three tips for vending at small shows? Ooh, that is such a good question. And we want to do um, a course called All Things Show Prep. We're gonna uh, we're gonna do a course for the rogue site mm -hmm. um, because obviously we've done too many shows. We've done too many shows, but I would say that we also want to put together like a short video on YouTube mm -hmm. for it. But what I would say is number one, um, don't go there to sell your art. Go there to meet people, mm -hmm. right? Because you want your personality and your attitude and just your upliftment to be all about meeting people. If you go to a show and you meet one or two people, that's great. If you meet a hundred people, that's great. Mm -hmm. If you go to a show and you're expecting to sell and that's your level of, of feeling good about yourself and feeling good about the show, chances are, I know that every show that we've done, there are shows where I didn't start selling anything till like way later in the evening. Yeah. And you know, if, if I had been there to sell stuff or even shows where I didn't sell anything, if I had been there to sell stuff, I would be, and, and I'm sure that you guys know if you've ever gone to an art show or you've been at an art show and you see the person sitting there, you it's, know. It's kind of a it's, repellent. Yeah, it's a repellent. You basically just put out. So I would say go there to have fun. Look for any other reason other than selling art. The art's going to sell itself. You're just there to meet people and answer questions and talk about the art. Another piece of advice is because there's a pretty good chance you will sell something anyway. Make sure you have a way to accept other forms of payment besides cash, yep. if at all possible. And we use Square. We use Square, but we can also accept all the things, the Venmo, Venmos and the Apple Pay blah, 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 and all yeah. the stuff. Make it easy for people to pay you if they want to. And stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. These summer shows are ridiculous and even if the bathroom is not easily accessible dehydrating yourself to avoid using it is a mistake that i made repeatedly we've both made that mistake and chronically because we didn't want to have to go <laughs> and, and I, use the bathroom and like idiots we decided to just dehydrate ourselves throughout the entire show eventually your body will make you pay for that Tara said, do you guys sell a t-shirt with the definition of Fachunking on it? Oh, you know what? I don't. I actually have two t-shirts that say Fachunk it, but that's a good idea. That's that is a, a good idea. That's a really good idea. I'm going to write that down. Um, I think the ticker tape jumped again, right? We, um, 
I saw a lot of good questions come up and we missed some. Okay. So well, let's let's go back. Oh uh, no, no, it's right right here. Okay. Do you got back up a little? Do you guys make art in on the road on vacation or does it stay in the studio? We do. We do. We do make art on we the do road. We make art on the road. Um, the idea there is to also be very aware of the fact that if you are on the road and you're visiting places, that if you do want to create art, you want to give yourself that extra time to do it. Most definitely. And don't overwhelm yourself with art supplies on the road. We've gotten no, much better at it lately. Don't. I made the mistake of bringing a big, giant pelican box full of hard art to supplies. Move. It was hard to move. Make it just just keep it simple if you're going to be on the road. For jewelry, I mostly collect specimens while I'm on the road for later use. And um, usually I'm working in a sketchbook, writing lyrics and stuff. Yeah. Um, Bashar wants to know, I find that I look at my old art and I think it's way better than my new art. Is that fair? Is this a confidence thing or just the regular ups and downs it's just, of mood? It's just, Bashar, it's just regular ups and downs of the mood. You know, the, the, the thing is that it's, it's it's funny because I will look at older pieces and think to myself like, oh man, I was so adventurous back then. But then we've been doing this for a yeah. decade. So it'll be like five years in, I'm looking at older pieces and I'm like, oh, that's, they're so great. And then, you know, now I'm looking at pieces from five years ago. I'm like, those were so great. I'm like, okay, so that means that there's a disconnect here. I think it is the natural ebb and flow. I have said the same thing. I'll look at my older work and think like, I was so much more creative back then before I had too many skill sets. I, I think it I think it's just a confidence and a mood thing, really. Um and it's just it's one of those things. It's one of those many things that us as artists we get to confront mm -hmm. because we're living it. So it's a really good thing to look at and be like, all right, you know, because the problem is that for a lot of us, a lot of people, you you know, your your brain tells you something and we're like, oh, it must be true because I'm thinking it. And the reality is that most of the crap that we think is just, you know, it's all made up. It's all made up. So. It's how like you look at pictures of yourself from five years ago and you always think you looked thinner back then. <laughs> And then, and you think you don't now, and then you'll look five years from now and at you'll be pictures like, oh, of you now. Oh, I was so thin back then. Yeah. Holly Cat's like, do you guys have any advice for painting a mountain and forest scene on a large wall? I'm trying to figure out how to make the mountain look textured and not just a blob. Indoor or outdoor, Holly Cat? Yeah. If you're doing it indoors, I mean, I would use uh, house paints for it anyway. Mm -hmm. And if I was going to do textured, um, I would. I mean, it depends. Like, can you add texture to it? Do you want to add texture or do you want it to look, you know, because if that's the case, then you're going to want to look at the values. Yeah, okay. like Diane said. Yeah. Or Sarah said you could texture with plaster. Yeah, you could texture with plaster. That's why it depends. Like, what what is it? And what will it be exposed to? Because you yeah. don't really want to do plaster if it's going to be on an exterior mm -hmm. wall. Um, Kelly wants to know, can you go back to a painting after you varnish if there is something you want to change? I have. You know what I usually do, Kelly, is I just sandpaper. I grab a, some some fine sandpaper and I'll sand that section because um, a lot of times the varnish, what it will do is it'll it will give the it gets rid of all the little pores that the paint holds on to and it, it'll be easy to well, not easy, but it can tend to peel off. Um, so I'll sand it so that there's a porous surface for the paint to stick to, and then I'll just varnish over that. Produceman wants to know, how can I get over mental money blocks? I made enough off my art to survive, but not enough to thrive and buy a house. My money guru says it's because I'm uncomfortable with making more money. That could be it. That could be true. That's something that Rafi and I have both had to work on in our lives. I came from a family where we, we always had just enough to get by, but never like any more than that so it's kind of like this belief about myself that I carried that like that was just the circumstances based on who I was and so it's rewriting possibly a narrative that's been with you for a long time another thing that stopped us from buying a house before we bought a house was that both of us along the same lines didn't believe that we deserved a house or could conceive of being able to buy a house and we had to work on undoing that bad programming also it's just ridiculous crap and the thing is you're asking the right questions and yeah. if you're going through the process of like really looking at it because 
it's not and it's not airy fairy stuff it's just we sabotage ourselves all the time and a lot of times a really good indicator that you're in the process of sabotaging your success if you want to call it that i hate using the word success but like is that you are feeling down about it you're feeling um like a victim to your own way of thinking or your own thing and it's really it's kind of rewriting that narrative as many times as you have to until it sticks because if you're having a hard time with something it's because you've already like repeated a narrative so many times that it's stuck mm -hmm. so it's just a matter of like doing it in the opposite direction and being patient with yourself if you find yourself saying like i'm the kind of person who blah 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 uh negative comments about yourself or somewhere deep down you don't think you've earned what you want those are definitely things to look at yeah uh, Deborah said, sometimes someone will offer a suggestion about one of my works. I consider it seriously and then either utilize the suggestion or ignore it. Yeah. That's I a mean, good approach. I mean, it's a good approach. People will suggest. I, I think you just got to that by person by person, suggestion by suggestion. People have suggested things to me that I'm like, no, just yeah, right off the bat. I'm like, no freaking right? way. Or, or you're like, or I know. immediately. I'm like, know. no, no, no. Um, I think we already answered that one, the fachunking one. I hi uh oh, Hannah. Bah, bah, I, uh, bah, where'd I go? I don't know. Where's Hannah? I don't know. Uh Hannah. There it is. Hi Hannah. Markets are so much fun. It's always best to have pieces in different price ranges. Yes, that's the other one too. Um I always made sure that I had stuff for basically it would range from ten dollars all the way up to, you know, five hundred dollars mm -hmm. um not saying that you need to have up to five hundred dollars but like keep in mind that everybody that's going to the market the majority of of the people that go to these shows they don't know that they're gonna buy stuff most of them are the, just there to look at stuff and if they see something that they really love and let's say um something is out of their budget if there is something that is less money they're more apt to buy something i i've known artists that go out and they do these shows and they only have like 500 to uh, you know a thousand dollar pieces up in there and th then they're upset because they didn't sell anything in that show and i'm like dude <laughs> like not, not people aren't gonna walk around with that money and you know that's you gotta really really keep in mind however what i would say is make sure that it's not you're not undervaluing the art make sure that it's something like prints or something like that that you could sell for less Christina is like, does drawing at cafes have an etiquette? Like, how long can I go with one drink I ordered till I have to get another one or they kick me out? I'm terrified of drawing at cafes, but I really want to try. Cafes, it, you know what? Cafes. It depends. I, I ran a cafe. I, I, I ran a, a Starbucks and we had people come in and they'd sit there all day with one cup of coffee. Yeah, at my local like um, greasy spoon coffee place, we could sit there all night and drink coffee and sketch yeah. in our books. If it's a busy cafe and space is limited, then, then you know, yeah, you gotta you kinda be, feel out the situation. You wanna be considerate, but if like nobody's in there. Most cafes are super cool about it. Plus yeah. it adds to the overall vibe of the cafe if they have artists in there. There's doing... an artiste sitting in our cafe. Definitely. Yeah. Sean wants to know, do I have to paint in oils to be a popular fine artist? I paint watercolor, but I always hear about only oils being the big seller. That Sean, is- Sean, that, there are a few videos that we have done where I rant about this. Yeah. Sean, there's going to be a lot of labels and a lot of, I'm going to, I'm going to try not to rant, but there's going to be a lot of bullshit when it comes to art and a lot of theories and structures that are out there. Unfortunately, a lot of that stuff just gets passed down through generations mm -hmm. and it becomes a shield in a, a thing like, only real, you know, only real artists uh, paint in oils and, and all this stuff because the great masters, you know, only only um, real art is not stapled. The canvas isn't stapled on the back. It is pinned like they did in the old times and like all kinds of stupid stuff like that. There are plenty of artists that I know that are watercolor artists. I paint in majority is in acrylic. Um, you know, I do use oils every once in a while, but I don't, it's not dictated by this is my real art and this is my fake art. It is 
whatever it is, it's sometimes I mix acrylics and, and oils in the same piece. Sometimes all three watercolor, acrylic and oil. Like I don't care. I'm going to use the medium. I have never, ever, ever, ever had a collector or a customer ask me about the materials and distinguish the difference. Right. Mm -hmm. Even if they know what oils and whatever are, they have never, ever, ever had that. The only people that complain and make that statement are artists. Ones that want to keep the barrier. Ones in place. that want to keep the barrier in place. So my entire strategy with this is to not give a rat's ass about what the standard is because um, there is no standard my additional rant to that is that contemporary art institutions don't give a rat's ass either no all you have to do is look at colossal magazine and the featured artists that are doing big exhibitions and have awesome careers in textile arts in uh, mosaic arts in watercolor in watercolor in acrylic in mediums that you wouldn't even consider house paints yeah uh, paper sculptures and just a plethora. It's actually really inspiring to see all that and break out of that old mentality of like, you can only work with marble and oil paints and uh, whatever if you are if you want to be a fine artist. That, that whole thing is, so think of it this way. That whole thing is kind of set up and it's been set up in the past. Like, you know, you go to art school and with the musicians, you had the altos and the... Sopranos. Sopranos. Mm -hmm. And which group was like the shit? The Sopranos. The Sopranos, Always. right? They got it's the lead a, melody. Yeah, it's the same <laughs> thing with the, you know, the, the oil artists and whatever. And it's because historically that's how it was used. Right. You know, it, it was... But but that's because historically the old masters didn't have acrylic or things like that. And old masters used watercolor mm -hmm. and they used all the materials that they could use. They just used whatever they had. There, there was no distinguishing. You didn't see old masters like, oh, <laughs> you only use oils of this. Like, you, that's not how. No, can you imagine? I saw pictures of an art installation, a big scale art installation recently that was all done with string. The whole and can you imagine somebody goes in and they're like string string that's not respectable <laughs> like it's just you should have created string with oils you get to do what you want these days and hallelujah to and, that. and people get really touchy about that I remember I made a comment in one of the videos because I I had created some paintings and somebody their comment to me was like your paintings would look so much better if they were in oils and I was like f you like <laughs> don't don't tell me what to create. I created that in acrylics because that's the material that it demanded. And so like, and they got really upset with me. They got mm. really upset with me. As you do when you're sticking to your guns on yeah. it. Christina wants to know if you want to make an independent art show, do you usually have to contact someone in the government or governing body of where you are to ask for permission or do you just do it? Mm. Generally, what, what you are just you? Just do it. No. No, yeah. that's not true. Yeah. If, it depends. It if depends. it's on public property, you generally have to get permission from the city. Unless you're just doing a live painting and accidentally bring some of your art and you have them on the bench next to you. If you are on private property, all you need is the property owner's permission. Yeah. It's better if you're going to do an event, like a lot of the like storefronts. That's why I say like approach businesses because then you could do a, an event in their parking lot mm -hmm. you could do an event in you know whatever now if it's public property yeah you definitely yeah. have to contact somebody yeah yeah and most most uh businesses and governing bodies are pretty uh amicable to yes. art happenings these days just contact all of them mm -hmm. just contact all of them um diane's like oh that makes me jealous i wish i had that uh uh tina had said that they have like art nights i think art nights cafes. do them do them diane start an art night bashar says adventurous is exactly how i would describe my past oh so are maybe you're feeling that way like you're not taking as much risk with your art these days not having as much experimentation that's that's that a good, could be a thing. That could be a thing. If you're looking at the older stuff and you're thinking like, you know, because one of the traps that we could easily fall into is like, now I know getting too good how to yeah. do this. <laughs> and then you like, you know, you don't push 
outside of that comfort zone because you know that this works and then you're like no i do it like this and like this and like this mm -hmm. and i would say just allow yourself to create a big old piece of crap and experiment and play and experiment and play um that's one of the reasons that in my book i say like i when people ask me if i'm a professional i'm not a perfect i i am a lifelong amateur because i'm going to play and push out of my comfort zone because that's where I want to be comfortable because that's how I started my career. You know, I just created stuff. I didn't know anything about anything. I just created stuff. And I think that that's where that playfulness comes from. Um, and just making sure that you don't like, now I know. Yeah. That, now I am a professional. That's a trap for me because <laughs> I make a lot of rustic jewelry, right? With all these fun textures, but I'm also like meticulous. And I find that sometimes some of my rustic pieces aren't rustic anymore. And then Cleo's like, no, I don't. Because they're, they're too perfect. <laughs> um, so yeah, have fun and play. Um, the ticker tape jumped again but a lot so let's see all right so if we missed your question you guys yeah because uh, we we just could not keep up with it i think we missed a whole heaping boodaloo of questions yeah um we're, we're gonna have to go back and like look at the look at the ticker tape yeah but do please feel free to retype your question yeah if we if we missed your, your if we missed your comment please retype it or just copy and paste it in there Christina's like, ah, the good old teen years when I dared to experiment with my art because I didn't have stuck up artists tear me a new one. Yeah, screw those stuck up artists. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's, uh, uh, ugh, like, listen, I, I, I do this for a living, right? I've been, I've been in, in shows, magazines, big giant exhibitions. I've done giant installations, right? I would never tear anybody a new one when it comes to their art. The only reason I would, and back a long time ago, before I was doing this for a living. In the cynical days. In the cynical <laughs> asshole days of Rafi, I would definitely tear somebody a new one. And the only reason I would is because I was insecure and didn't wasn't actually doing the stuff. So any artist out there that's going to tear you a new one, I'd be like, your mom's not fine art. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Damn, yeah. I just said your mom joke to that hypothetical artist. Yeah. Um, Fat Cat's like, also, it's dumb, because if you limit to just oils, then you're missing out on how fun it is to experiment with other paints and mediums. Yes, indeed, indeed. Uh, let's see. Deborah says, never limit yourself. Never limit yourself. Diane said, my local coffee shop is owned by some amazing people that would be open to it. I honestly hadn't considered starting an art. Yes, night. absolutely, Diane. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Holly Cat says, the wall is indoor and in a store for an RC crawler course. Plaster is a good idea. That yeah, is cool. Could, oh, I like that. Then you could totally do the plaster. Yeah, use the plaster. Use the plaster. Do some experiments beforehand. You know, on a wall in your house? Definitely. <laughs> uh, Chris Dahl said, absolutely paint in whatever medium you want. Ignore the gatekeepers. Yes. Absolutely. Shroy sure, would like to know where babies come from. Babies <laughs> come from the sky. Definitely. Yeah, geese. Geese. Or storks. Geese. One of those birds. <laughs> geese. I don't know if a geese, geese could handle a baby. Geese bring in the babies. Have you ever seen a stork in real life? Dude. You're fucking giant. Storks are enormous. Sorry, I just forgot I was on a live no, stream. No, I just... <laughs> uh, it was and they're ugly. They're the... They're, they're, you know, nature is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But, like, storks... Storks are incredible. Those, those look like something out of, like, a horror movie. Like, I'm like, if I this thing was coming at me... Oh, in a dark it would, alley, it would I get would, you. No, I, I would, I would scream. I would scream in terror. And then it would get you. And then it would get me. Um, yeah. they look like dinosaurs. I saw a stork for the first time in real life about six years ago. Mm -hmm. Maybe we took um one of the kids to the zoo. Yep. And they had storks, and I was like, "Holy bleepity bleep 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 bleep! Storks are the weirdest yeah. thing ever, but they're fascinating to me." Valerie said the stick man is no longer allowed to critique my work and neither is anyone else's stick man. That's right. That's right. 
Christina said, should I ask the barista at the cafe if I can sketch there? Yeah. I mean, you, you can. And th- you know what? The barista will probably be like, yeah. Why not? Go for it. Um, Artist <clears throat> Haven said, opinions are like, boop, holes. <laughs> Everyone has one, but we don't necessarily want to hear yours. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Mix said, I struggled trying to get uh, to get light to stand out in my painting. Supposedly, they say the darker, the more light stands out, but I make great landscapes. Light can be so tricky. Yeah, light, is, light is tricky because a lot of times when you, you want to start lighter, Mm. on on those areas and what i would recommend is that you start with the light background where you want the the light to come out and then and then go darker as you ease out until that it just looks like it's popping right whenever it it was one of the things that got me started on my drip texture because i would do this this gorgeous like light orange and yellow hue with a little bit of red on the edges and then i would put in my dark paint you know it would literally look like it was glowing and that's that's really the trick to it it's um the opposite the yeah the contrast. that's not that's not yeah the contrast yeah. <laughs> the opposite that's the technical <laughs> way that you use it in art uh, Lias is like i guess that's why geese travel in flocks it takes a lot to carry a kid <laughs> holly cat babies came from geese clean new faith quote you're welcome <laughs> Yeah, geese. Definitely geese. Uh, um, when it's the baby season, it's then the season where they're not shitting on everything and everyone. Yeah. And then when it's shitting season, I guess it's not baby season. Yeah, there's the there's geese. a lot of stories in the private live streams where we talk about uh, how geese are assholes. They are. Christina yeah. said, I walked among storks. One of the local zoos have this open enclosure where storks can chill at and then leave. What? What? That's crazy. That's cool. New England's, I had acrylics and cheap canvases in my cart, and a woman looked in and said, oh, you're one of those people. I want to slam my hand on the desk right now. And my intelligent response was, huh? Huh? That's what I would have said, (laughs) too. I would have been the same. What? (laughs) I probably would have went, I I probably would have been like, (laughs) I just smiled at them and be like, and then walked away. I'm like what? that would have been a story for them. They would have been like, so I I looked over at somebody and they had well, you're one of those people. And then they looked at me and they're like, Burr! and then walked away. <laughs> Scariest moment of my life. Totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tom Williams is like it was historic. Ick. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nicely done. All right, let's, uh, did we do, okay, we're still there. One of the questions that Christina had asked that I just, it popped into my mind was she had asked, like, so how do you get to that place mentally where you can start feeling like you deserve the things that you want? And one of the questions that I used to dissect that whole web of lies (laughs) was, what does it even mean to deserve or to be worthy yeah. of the things that you like? What does that even mean? Why wouldn't I deserve the things that I am striving for? Would I would I hold someone else to those standards? Like, would I look at a rando person and be like, oh, you don't deserve yeah. why do you, the things that why, you strive for? Just because just because society likes to be very conditional, right? You don't have to be conditional. You could be yeah. unconditional when it comes to things. And honestly, that's a really good question. That's how it is. You break it down, all those things, and you break down the reason why. So it's like, well, you know, how do I feel like I should deserve something? And then you break that question down. Like, well, why do I feel like I need, to, why do I need to feel like I deserve something? Right. Wait a second. Don't I deserve this? Isn't worthiness kind Isn't, of inherent yeah, in everyone? Yeah, so it's like it's really <laughs> breaking down the false logic that there is behind. You know, it's like, well, you can't become an artist because you need to blank, 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 blank. And when you start to really question these these things, these false premises, like you'll notice that like it falls apart. It all falls apart because it's just it's based on bullshit. It's just it's crap. You can't you can't make a statement that goes across the board and you can't ever say that you're not worthy of something or that you're not good at something um, when you're not you're not looking at the totality of your life. Mm -hmm. You haven't lived it yet. 
So, I call bullshit yeah. on <laughs> my non-worthiness or uh, my undeservingness. All, all this geese stuff has inspired some. <laughs> some <Right. thing. laughs> Producement wants to know, do you guys like making art in batches or one piece at a time? It, it depends. depends. It yeah. Depends. Sometimes if I'm going to make a thing, I'll make it in like three different metal types all at the same time just to see it. Uh, in the three metal types i yeah. like to work on one thing at a time that's who i am as a person but sometimes it makes sense for me to make a batch of things so yeah it does depend yeah usually like especially if i'm working on the smaller pieces that i'm going to be offering for like 20 or 40 dollars at a show um i actually work on them all at once so i might work on like 20 pieces at once put them all together and pretend like i'm creating one big painting you mm -hmm. know what i mean and that way that's one big painting but i also usually have several projects going on at once in the studio because i don't like waiting for paint to dry and she, i am extremely lazy i don't have to wait for paint to dry yes yeah. um and she's not extremely lazy christina is asking when you draw outside what do you do when the light has changed or things have moved like should i make a backup photo before i, I start? always do i always i do. think that's a good good thing to do yeah yeah I, I always do i take a picture right away and then i just play with it because you could always go and tweak it to be honest with you a lot of those sketches that the magic happens later when you're tweaking it House of Fire Belly Toads, do you both believe that there is still art that can be called unique or even a world nobody has seen yet, similar like H.R. Geiger? Absolutely. Absolutely, dude. Yeah, absolutely. I believe we've only scratched the surface of human creativity and um, imaginings and things we can bring forth. And the more we share and imagine and collectively um, share those things with each other, the bigger that pool of infinite imagination gets you gotta you because gotta, you gotta think of it this way like think of how long there's been books yeah right a long and time a long time and like think of all the awesome books that have come out recently or in the last 10 years or in 20 years or in 30 years like or songs man songs songs music. are old as dirt <laughs> Songs are old as dirt and like there's just there's no limit. There really is no limit. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people out there are going to want you to think that there is, but there isn't. There isn't a limit to creativity. No, it's not um, finite. With every new invention, with every new uh, way of thinking, with everything comes a, just a, an explosion of more and more uh, stuff to reach for. Mm -hmm. Creativity begets creativity. <clears throat> it only grows, yep. I feel. That's my belief. What up, Tater Flaps? Hey, Tater Flaps. There's a peacock at the park that runs over to attack me every time he oh, sees me. Peacocks. Peacocks are assholes, too. They, they're really territorial, but maybe he loves you if he's if it's just you maybe especially since tater flaps is now eating broccoli i know tater flaps is now enjoying broccoli i heard <laughs> word on the street nostalgic is like where do you turn priority wise when finances are tight not cash grab but something to bring in uh money somewhat expeditiously so we do something really counter uh intuitive which is we hang tight try not to think about it and get busy making stuff that gets us excited yeah yeah basically when when stuff slows down mm -hmm. that's when i need to be most excited about what i do because that's what's going to push me through now in our money book um i basically lay out the system that we put in place uh for us which it slowly but surely builds up a rainy day fund because as an artist you could have a month where you do really well, mm -hmm. and then you could have a month that you don't do well. You could have a few weeks that you do extremely well. You could have two months that you don't do anything. Like this isn't, a lot of people are very used to finances of like going to work where you know you're gonna get a paycheck every week or every other week or every month. And like, that's not how it is when you're an artist. Like you could sign up for a show every single weekend and every weekend you're it's going to be like this mm -hmm. you know so like when you are when things are slow that's when you should get most creative yeah that's when you should get most creative and we're not blowing smoke up your rear end like this is legitimately how we approach we have i have done markets 
specifically because money was tight in the past and found out the hard way that money's just not guaranteed when you're doing shows for that reason. Um, yeah, that's the time to really just focus on the creative end of what you do. And because of the stuff we've set up, things haven't gotten really, really, really scary for us financially. Um, but man, not that long ago they did when we bought this house and then had to spend a lot of money and had none coming in for like nine months. You got to think about it. Like we've been doing this for 10 years. So over 10 years, we like built up our buffer just little by little, right? It's, it's a marathon. It's not a race. Um, but buying the house and then all the repairs and all the money that was going out, like things get scary. Yeah. Things are going to get scary when the pandemic happened. Things get scary. Like you want to, you, you want to plan ahead for rainy days and you just want to really focus on how you manage your money and, how much you're spending, what you're spending money on. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, you I, know. I ask artists sometimes, like, so how much do you need to make every week in order to, you know, be okay? Or how much do you need to make every month in order to be okay? And a lot of times they got to sit there and, like, figure it out. And I'm like, you should know this stuff. If you are counting on your art to be your income, you should know what money's coming in and what money's going out. Definitely. And most importantly, what money's going out because that's the money that you have most control over. Yeah. So when things have gotten tight, we have absolutely cut out frivolous and unnecessary expenses. Yep. You know, the things that you enjoy when you're making it rain money. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, um, you know, that's uh, ramen noodle soup. Yeah. Month. Like, all right, we, we're going to get imaginative with ramen noodle and cans of tuna. Yeah. Uh, Artist saving what? No, no, not, not the, the broccoli. Broccoli is <laughs> so good. Bashar is like, I was telling my friend about Artist Doomsday from the Diabolical program, which shall not be named. Thank you for not naming it. And even he was concerned, and he's a barber. <laughs> oh man, I am not letting oh. AI near my head with scissors anytime soon, that's for sure. <laughs> so. It's been snaking its way through the industries I, for a while. I It's been snaking its way through everything. But the thing is that, like, there's a lot of fear out there. And I put a video out there about it. And it, if you notice, I took the video down because it just, there was so much, there's so much fear and so much misinformation out there about it and really smart sounding misinformation about it. And I think that the biggest problem is that it, they call it AI, but really it's not artificial intelligence. It's no not matter sentient. no matter no matter who out there is talking about it being artificial intelligence, it's not. It doesn't think on its own. It's not happy when it creates art. It's not thinking of the moral constructs of whatever. It's it doesn't not, feel conflicted about it. It doesn't what it's feel doing. conflicted about what it's doing. It's not planning its future like, oh, you know what? Next year I want to do this. Like, none of that is happening. It's, it's not, not wondering how it's going to pay its rent next month it's and whether it's not it should... <laughs> fucking artificial intelligence. God. And it's not going to replace artists because artists do think about those things. I'm not going to go on a rant. I'm. Breathe. I'm sorry. It's not you. It's it's that whole subject. I hate seeing people. I I've gone on YouTube and I'll get comment after comment of like, well, why am I even going to try if like AI could create better art than me? And I'm like, fucking sick. like, just stop. Like, you're going to use any excuse that there is to doom scroll and doomsday. And, you know, and it's like, don't do that. We're going to figure it out, whatever it is, whatever it is. It's too early in the game to even figure anything out like that. Artist Haven is like, AI is a tool, nothing more, nothing yes. less. It's a sonic screwdriver, but it's still a screwdriver. Exactly. I <laughs> uh, recently made a joke that, well, it was a joke. It's a bad joke. But I said, I feel about AI kind of like how I feel about A1 sauce. It's okay. And there's uses for it, but it's not a replacement for a good cut of meat <laughs> or a good piece of That's art. That's actually a really good way of putting it. Uh, Tater Flap said, Rafi, have you ever used Dr. Martin's dyes? Disappointed that they changed the formula over the years. I have. I have. And they, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it is a disappointment. Christina said, I wish they would use robots and AI to do dangerous jobs that people uh, wouldn't 
have to do if they didn't want to already. That would be great. And Christina also said that... And Pete's like, rant on! <laughs> Christina also said, um, <laughs> I bet the old masters would have loved stuff like gel pens. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, they would have loved gel pens. Mm -hmm. AI isn't on the level we see in fiction. Yes, it's not. It's just not. It's not AI. <laughs> it's not actually AI. Not the way that we think of AI because it's not Terminator. It's not It's not any of that stuff. It doesn't feel. It's not, uh, what is it, Bicentennial Man. It's a uh, freaking program. If someone makes that excuse, they likely weren't motivated in the first place. That's yeah. what Sean has to yeah, say Yeah, Sean, about it. thank you. Thank you. Um, Try because you love it. That's, That's why, why you try. try, yes. Deborah said a budget is imperative. However, income blocks occur that aren't repairable. Loving your passion and not beating yourself should be at the top of your list. Yeah, yeah. and that's that's the thing. Like, shit's going to happen. And my fallback, which I'm way more comfortable with it than Clee. Clee's been working on this over the years. About is, the monies. Yeah, and I talk about this in the, the money book, too. You know, like, it's funny because... Um, <clears throat> the rich people will not have any problem declaring bankruptcy or not paying debts. But people like the working class, basically the plebeians of old time, right? It's almost like you think you're going to get in trouble if you don't pay your debt. And that's where, that's where I'm like, well, the worst that could happen is that I don't pay it this month. And then you set up some kind and you of... You don't pay it next month. And then you set up a payment plan with them. Yeah. And let them know because they're going to want your money anyway. And even if they need to discount it, they're going to discount it. So that's worst case scenario, right? And it's really going through that process of working out the worst case scenario in it. Because a lot of people think, well, if I don't pay my bills, things, I'm going to explode. Like, you know, <laughs> I I won't exist. I'm going to blink out of existence. And it's like, that's not going to happen. You're, you're going to, you're going to survive. You're going to be okay. Um, Clover's like, I think it's a tool, but most cons I've been at have banned AI art. I yeah. have no idea how they would enforce it. Just, I mean, it's, and that's the thing. It's like you're working the way it's being used now. It's a tool. And, you know, unfortunately, humans out there are sometimes a-holes and they're going to use this tool in a way that they shouldn't. Um, so it's not the tool itself. It's the humans that are using it. I was saying the other day that uh, the Onion newspaper should write an article with the headline, Humans Prove Once Again to Be the Biggest Problem with Emerging Technology. Yeah. So, <laughs> but now, you know, because it's being used that way, um, there's going to be rules and laws and stuff. You know, it's new. So, mm -hmm. like, a lot of this stuff is going to happen. It's going to get banned. It's People are not going to allow it to be used for certain things. So, like... Yeah. And it's going to get restricted to what it is supposed to be used for. So that's, we just got to mine through that shit. But as far as it like replacing it, like that's not going to happen. Jesse is like, AI is a misnomer. It's just pattern recognition algorithms. Yes. Yeah. Thank Johnny you. wants to know how many finished pieces do you suggest as a goal for a first gallery show? 50? 80? Well, it definitely depends on the size of the gallery. The size of the space. Um, so you want to kind of work that out. Size of the space. What collection are you going to do? How big are the pieces? How do you want them? You know, I usually fill, fill up a wall, wall because that's wall. that's what I like. So um, the big spaces that I've been in, I've done up to uh, over 100 to 100 pieces. But... Most of the galleries, like the smaller galleries, like I've done maybe like 20 to 50, you know. So mm -hmm. really, whatever it is that you're comfortable in, whatever is going to work with the show. Like, what do you want to bring? You know, you might want to bring like 10 in this series or 10 in this series or just a full on series. So Chris. think think of how you're going to design your show and, and what you want it to look like. Mm hmm. Christina said, have you ever felt like you were of no use to anyone but yourself? Because I'm an artist, it's hard for me to understand what value my art could have for anyone else but myself. Christina, your art changes the world. Everywhere you look, everywhere you look, what, if you're looking at a phone right now or a computer screen or anywhere, a billboard, a building, the architecture, everywhere you look, art exists. 
and you as an artist are creating something unique and beautiful and bringing it into the world mm -hmm. and you will be surprised especially the more you put it out there and the more people find it how valuable your art is absolutely and i'm gonna plug <clears throat> our own channel right now because um we did a whole video about how does art serve the greater good how yeah. does art serve the individual besides the artists themselves and um i thought a lot about that subject um on my own and based on a question from one of our community um, and so I recommend, um, if you have the time, check out that video that we did, How Does Art Serve? Because uh, I think it's a pretty good video on it's that good, topic. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a good video. And Clee was the head of that video. That doesn't that's not the reason. That's why she likes it. I think no. it's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I like it. It's good. Uh, yeah, it's me. <laughs> My face is in the front and it's not blurry. So it's one of our best videos, if I'm being no, honest. It's a, really, it's a really great video. And it, it's she covers a lot of points that, you know, of wh why art is important. Because it is. It is important. It, and I know as an artist, like you're creating your own stuff. It's kind of like you living your life and you're being like, well, you know, I do the same thing every day. And someone else looking at your life and being like, this is fascinating. You have a fascinating life. And you'd be like, oh, I do. I do. Like, you know, <laughs> Chubby J is like, I love the onion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love the onion. AI might become just another medium like oil paint and photography. Yeah. Everybody freaks out when there's a new thing. They always do. They did the, the same beginning. thing. I mean, if you would have seen what it was like, I had done some research into like when the camera, when, when the camera emerged and artists were freaking the fuck like, Nobody's ever going to do a portrait again. And I'm like, you know, there's a lot of portrait artists out, out there. You know, yeah, man. there is a lot of portrait artists and those portrait artists use photographs. They don't have to have the subject sitting in front of them anymore. So it's like, just chill out, chill out. Christina's asking the, does art serve a purpose one? Is that what it's called? Is yes. that its title? Does art serve yes. a purpose? Yeah. Um, Tater Flap says, love you. Rafi and Klee going to feed the peacocks broccoli. <laughs> Sounds love awesome. You, Tater. Love you, we're, Tater. We're about to end. We're, we're actually a little bit over. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank it's, you, Nancy, for um, for the like button plug for us. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, Hit that like button. Uh, how do you, <laughs> what do you do? Like, subscribe. Yes, that. <laughs> Shameless plug in. <laughs> Johnny Darko said, thanks for the advice. Y'all are super cool for doing this Q&A. Oh, uh, absolutely. Thank you for being here. Okay, one more question. Uh, Jenny says, artists are the saviors of the world. Agreed. Agreed. Well said. Chef's every kissed. Every artist out there, um, just raise your hand. Ooh, yes. Me. Yes, it's me. <laughs> Cheryl said, sometimes I create a piece and I'm not satisfied, so I gesso over it and try again. Can I sell the new finished piece or should anything I sell be on fresh canvas? Oh, man. <laughs> okay, so if you've ever watched any documentary on any of the great masters and they do that x-ray, you're going to see a bunch of paintings underneath that. They paint it over their paintings like a mofo. I have paintings out there that... I, I don't know if I should even say it. there was one painting in particular that I was getting really frustrated with it. And I ended up painting, um, a rude a phallic symbol because he was frustrated. Yes. And so then I covered that and then I did the painting and it came out great. And then, you know, sold it to someone. And all I could think of is when they x-ray that in the future, if they x-ray it in the future, there'll be a giant dick. And yeah. Balls. I'm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It just is what it is. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's what it is. I already tried to use the PC <laughs> version. <laughs> That's it. It the, wouldn't be a wrapping clee stream. We have gotten there was not Some inappropriate. I'm pretty YouTube, sure you could say that on YouTube. YouTube has, has deleted our channel. No, you can we say We no longer exist on there you could say that <laughs> i'm not saying it now just in case you can't say that twice <laughs> well, you could say it once but you can't say it twice who knows uh maybe it's a time you know how many times by the way this it? is out there forever i know and you know that's going to become a meme i'm comfortable with it somebody's going to take that clip <laughs> and there's <laughs> a dick <Nick> involved <laughs> yep <laughs> 
Leah is like, I think I'll be writing a geese screenplay after this and I maybe love some it. geese art. Today was inspirational. <laughs> I love it. Patricia's like, one more time, what is your new website called? It is um, the, uh, rogue... rogueartistcommunity.com yep. or roguefam.com. Yeah. R-O-G-U-E-F-A-M.com. Segway to banana hammock merch, anyone suggest? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I only put aside canvases when they have bad mojo. I yep. let it sit for a while until I feel like conquering something. That's yeah, a good. Yeah, that's, that's a good that's approach. That's perfect. Yeah, yep. people are laughing. Rafi what is queen? blushing. <laughs> I, I hope that was the a... one I bought. <laughs> <laughs> Ginny, it was not. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's out there somewhere, though. Honest to goodness, I can't remember what the subject matter on top of it was. I only remember the canvas dimensions. The speaking, the... the speaking channel. I think it was a Celtic knot. I think it was no, it was a tree of life. I did a tree. Of, oh no, it was a tree of life. That's yeah. great. <laughs> Thank you for that. It was fab. Thank you, speaking channel. Oh no, the banana hammock. Yeah, let's not. Let's not. That's. And you said it twice, said yeah. Christina. And you said it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I sure did. Meme away, Valerie is I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm going to keep this stream for posterity clean. <laughs> paint Excellent. something about the government and paint over it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. I've been binge watching your videos these last few days. Thanks so much. Top notch advice all around. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Uh, Get out your x-ray, x-ray glasses. glasses. Yep. I have several Our, bad canvases unfinished leaning on the walls for years. Yeah, you yeah. should just do something with those. Eventually, in time. Maybe maybe you can make it a series called Several Bad Canvases Unfinished Leaning on the Wall. I would go to that art show. <clears throat> so would I. I would go to that art show. I mean, that would be amazing. Like, you go in there and, like, you're just not understanding what's happening, but you're like, this is kind of ballsy and cool. Christina's like, that is so on brand in my culture. They used to think of the Milky Way as the cosmic woman equivalent. Oh, so why not have love the, that. the tree of life That's, with yeah, the that works. dick and balls background? Would you stop saying that? <laughs> People are going to be like, what happened to Rafi? Uh, Rafi was here channel on YouTube. Oh, they got, they got banned. They got banned because Klee couldn't. Dude, if we're the most offensive thing out that there, then the world is in trouble. Do you photograph and record every piece of artwork that you sell? Yes. We do so, now. We do now. I did not. Um, and I must have sold maybe 120 works of art before I even started like really taking photographs. Mm-hmm. Um, but as soon as I'm done with the piece, I'll actually photograph the work before I put any varnish on it um, so that I get a really good picture. Um, most definitely and that's that's it i mean i don't know i'm still not at that point where i catalog my art i technically catalog my art by putting it up on my website yes that's how i do as well yes tom williams said the one time i almost bought a painting a buddy of mine did a large painting called dick thicket it's exactly what you think it is it was glorious (laughs) that's amazing I don't know. This conversation is now heading in a direction. Christine is like, so painting a glorified eggplant under a tree of life is on brand. Yes, that works. That works. That's what we're, we all concur. Glorified eggplant. Yes. Yes. Devandi said, and you skipped it. Oh, no. What did we skip? What did I we don't skip? know. Did we skip something? So, <clears throat> no, I have three canvases that the frames warp going to rip mm. or cut them apart and reuse them in other places. Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. I actually have one where the, uh, right now that the canvas is so warped that I'm thinking of cutting the canvas and doing like a cool design where it being warped kind of works with how it's supposed to be. Yeah, cool. You know? Lean into it. Yeah, it just lean into I mean, I'd make it all artsy-fartsy and, and like, cool. I, I'll have to see about, you know, the the destruction or decomposition of art and maybe call it something like that. Bad canvases leaning on a wall. Yeah, bad canvases leaning on a wall. Carol, we have to, t- we have to read this. Okay. Uh, Rafi, three years ago, a tenant bought two of my paintings. This week, she put them on the free donation table. Now she wants her money back. This sounds wrong to me. That's because it is hella wrong. Yes. Hella, hella, hella wrong. 
it's not okay to demand your money back after you bought artwork three years ago just because you changed your mind or whatever. You don't. You're not obligated to do anything. So she put if, them on the free donation table. Just take it back, but don't don't pay her for it. Like, right. You're not buying it from her. If she's putting it on a don- donation table, then yeah, no, no, no. You know, sometimes you're gonna run into people that do that because they bought the work for the wrong reasons, right? They bought it as a decorative element or whatever. And then they feel entitled. The fact of the matter is you're a business person. You sold the art to them. Um, I would seriously get somebody, even if you don't want to get caught, I would get somebody else to grab the paintings and bring them back. And then you could just resell them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's probably how I would do too. Yeah. That, that, that got under my skin a little bit. I would, I would have just been like, all right, F F you. Kyle's like, if you drew that in Sharpie, Rafi, Rafi, please Rafi. only fans. <laughs> if you drew that in Sharpie, it will eventually bleed through Rafi, just saying. <laughs> it was in paint. It was in paint. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, we should probably call it. Yeah, we should. <laughs> a series called Bad Paintings and see if someone will buy. I love it. I would do that. Definitely. Devandy said, no worries. No, oh, okay. I'm curious. What? I know, right? Now we gotta search Wait. for it. Wait. Oh. No, no. No. No, we're not gonna make them sit here watching us while we're like looking at the ticker tape. No, okay. it's not All right. exciting. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. All right, sorry, Devandy Studios. Yeah. Uh, uh okay. You ain't Walmart, my friend, said Artis Hayes. Yes, you're not Walmart. Yeah, don't, don't, don't. That that's that that is absolutely you know. So yeah. yeah, Crystal said the same thing. Also, go pick up your art from the free table and sell it again. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. most definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, guys. Yeah, we better go. It's time for we'll, us. we'll hang out with you guys. And and this is this is a lot of fun. It's time for us to go eat some food. Indeed. Thank you for the laughs. Thank you guys for being here. You guys are awesome. We adore you. This was so much fun. This was wicked, yeah. wicked fun. I loved it. Uh, oh, I just got distracted. Tell that woman you're not Costco. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Jeez, nobody has a three-year return window. Nobody has not a three-year even Costco. return window. And like, I'm like, no, no. No, just no. Just no. You can I mean, play- if somebody was like, you know, I think I should get my money back for these. I'd be like, uh, yeah, well, you're thinking wrong. Just go ahead and that's play. That's not how it works. Player this portion of the live stream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> be like, sorry, my peers had the following to say. I would like you to s- just watch this and here, just show her this. Hi, my name is Rafi Perez and I am an artist. And the fact that you are demanding a refund after three years just tells me that you are a complete idiot. Thank you, and have a nice day. And by the way, she's not Costco. So, goodbye. I'm clean. and I approve this message. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Love you guys. Uh, next live. So, our next public live stream is going to happen, I will tell you right now. On our band channel. Yes, our band channel. So on our band channel, we do a a music stream. That's going to happen on March 22nd. And then our next live stream on here is going to be next month on the 5th. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you guys then. Thank you guys um, so much for being here. Yeah. Yeah, this this was was, this was a lot of fun. We look forward to much more of this with you. Kyle's like, when you're famous, she'll be kicking herself. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. This needs to be a short. All right. Love you guys. Off we go. (laughs) Hooray. It's there. It's there. It's there. Okay. Oh, I didn't hit the button. (laughs) Fail.